They should be, and they shouldn't wait for the government to ask them to leave. Congressman, so you think fair is fair, some of these guys should go as well, right? Yes, Neil. We obviously in Michigan and within the manufacturing community with the encouragement of the White House to have Mr. Wagner leave, which he did, we wonder why there is disparate treatment between Mr. Wagner's situation and the situation we saw last week with the White House bringing the CEOs of the financial institutions that brought the globe to the precipice of a depression and pledging to cooperate with them and still having more of our hard-earned money on the line to the tune of a hundred billion dollars, potentially a trillion dollars. Why the disparate treatment? What is the policy principle at work here? Do you think all of this could have been avoided in the first place by not rescuing anyone, by not bailing out anyone? And the brutal free markets would have decided their fate. If they're not getting it done, bankruptcy was at least the option, or their fannies getting kicked out was. Yes, the key to the to the Wall Street bailout, which I opposed and other people opposed, was the fact that you were creating a system that would not unfreeze the credit markets, that the TARP program Paulson put forward wouldn't work. There was an alternative put forward by House Republicans. Unfortunately, the Bush administration did not pursue that. And so in many ways, you're right, Neil, had prompt, swift action been taken at the time last fall, we could have had a resolution of much of the financial crisis, if not all of it, and then we would not be in a position we are today with any companies. Do you find it odd, I know switching gears back to the auto thing, but the one thing that fascinates me is the new CEO of GM was using the B word, bankruptcy, as an option if they don't clean things up relatively soon. We really could have saved ourselves a lot of grief had we entertained that from the get-go, right? Well, the administration has now clearly said that there's a substantial likelihood, quote-unquote, of bankruptcy. There will be 60 days for GM to comply with a new viability plan. The concern that we have in my district, of course, is how many more jobs will be lost as part of that viability plan the White House wants and what the retirees will have to sacrifice. But in this case, Neil, those who talk about bankruptcy or want to talk about when the loans to the auto industry end, for GM it's 60 days and for Chrysler it's 30. Do you worry about the government deciding what vehicles to make and what it deems to be the hot vehicles that consumers have to have? Absolutely. We've always been concerned this is where the CAFE mandates come in and much of the governmental regulation on the auto industry has always been. It's not been a question of not making cars people want to buy. You'll see Washington tell you to make cars that politicians want people to buy. And to go in and try to tell the auto companies what kind of cars to make seems to be a rather self-defeating proposition. Congressman, always a pleasure. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Neil. Well, one